So, two and a half years ago, I built my PC and my CPU. I bought a delidded i5-8600K, which had liquid metal on the die. So it was it had liquid metal applied when it was delidded. And I put liquid metal on the IHS when installing it. And that was basically just over two and a half years ago, actually. It would have been two years, seven months. So today we're going to have a look at how liquid metal lasts over a long term because I haven't seen anyone test it over more than a year long period before replacing it and a lot of people say oh liquid metal doesn't last long and stuff so today we're going to see what it's like. So there isn't much to actually go over, all there is is temperatures and noise and how it actually looks after this amount of time so that's everything we're going to look at really. Now the first thing we're going to go over is temperatures. After running Cinemage R23 for half an hour we reached an average of 82 degrees with a max of 86 and a low of 78. And the cooler's temperature of the liquid reached about an average of 46. Temperatures at idle are about 38 degrees on the cooler, liquid temperature in the cooler, and around about 48C on the CPU core. Now telling you the temperatures of everything is great, but it means nothing without giving you a reference. So obviously I have an i5-8600K, which is a 6-core, six 6-thread six CPU. And it was and it's running at 5 gigahertz with 1.38 volts to the core now that we've got the temperatures out of the way we're going to go over the actual sound test so first i'm going to play 10 seconds with idle 10 seconds at load at full load the pump is at 3000 rpm and the fans are averaging about 1300 rpm and at idle a pump speed of 1700 rpm and a fan speed of about 500 ish Now the only thing left to do is have a look at what it looks like after two and a half years and I'm going to be just flowing on a new cooler but I won't be using liquid metal of that yet as I'm waiting until I get a new CPU to apply liquid metal. But we can still compare temperatures between the old AIO of liquid metal and the new one. So we've got the PC out now and as you can see it's right here and we just need to take off the radiator, take off the cooler and then we can expect how it looks basically and just what how it's affected over the time look have a look at the ihs have a look at how it's affected the copper base plate on the cooler and yeah we can also install the new cooler this chunky beautiful thing okay so we are now gonna have a little peek of um what's happened oh there you go and there you go look at metal after two years As you saw, it got quite a bit stuck then, and I'll just give it a little feel. Oh yeah, that is not liquid anymore. As you can see, that is completely dry. And same with the CPU block. Now, the funny thing about this is it being completely dry is, unlike thermal paste, even when this is completely dry, it still it still conducts heat well. Whereas with thermal paste, when it dries out, it happened with my graphics card. It was reaching like over 80 degrees, and for a graphics card, that's quite hot. And it was re reaching over 80 degrees, and our liquid metal there, and now it's at 60 in games. So this still hitting 80, 85C at 5 gigahertz. It's pretty damn good. So I'm going to clean this up. We're going to put on the new cooler and compare temperatures. Okay, so I should probably do a little overview of what just went on there because I said a few things which wouldn't have made sense because you didn't you didn't see what happened. So when I was taking it off, there was a lot of pressure, and as you saw when I was rubbing my finger on the liquid metal, it wasn't liquid anymore. So what had happened is the liquid metal had solidified, but it was just like a really compacted powder, if that makes sense. So it was able to come apart still but it was not great and we'll go over in a minute how i actually got this off because it's literally a not a liquid anymore it is metal it's a solid so i've tried to start getting liquid metal off the cpu now and i'm literally having to scrape it off with this scraper 
because it's just so solid. And I'm also having to use this wire wall and baby wipes to help break it down. That's a new cooler. And on the old one, I managed to get it really good. Like, it feels basically the same as the old cooler. So yeah, it's pretty good. And it doesn't matter that it's stained because it's still very conductive. Not quite as conductive as copper, but yeah. So, just gotta get this off now. Wow, I am very impressed with myself. It looks like it's barely there. And the back looks all good. So yeah, I've done it. It's great. I'm, yeah, I'm happy with that. Let's go sort this out. So, it's been a couple of days since I've installed it, as you can see. It's installed and um, I've just been running stress tests and you need to let the thermal paste bed in. And it looks really good actually inside the case. The issue we're getting now is under like extreme loads like an i5 6800k on Cinebench will pull, well on my one at least, will pull 120 watts at the most, maybe 130. But with OCCT's um, short test, I can't remember the exact thing that it's called, but the VRMs, it, the CPU pulls around 170 watts, and the VRMs overheat. Now, the CPU's never under that load unless you're doing that test, but when I get my new CPU, it's going to be pulling about 170 watts, so I need to select the cooling on the VRMs. That's one thing I need to do, which I might go over in another video or something. But yeah, so that VRM cooler does help, but yeah, I've tried adding another fan up the top. I don't know if you can see it through there. Kind of. I tried to add another fan to blow on this, but it helped a bit, but it's still overheated over time. But yeah, let's chuck the panels back on, and then we're going to do the same test as we did before. So, after half an hour again of Cinebench R23, our temperatures have equalised about 65 degrees on average. And that's great. Like, that's, a, that's literally basically exactly a 20 degrees drop. The fans are only spinning at 750 RPM, and like over 1300 before. Pump speed, I can't measure it with this. And the liquid temperature, I can't measure either. But what I do know is that it's silent. Like, full load, the fans are barely louder than at idle. This radiator is brilliant, and I know that this isn't a great comparison to the old liquid metal because we use a different radiator and stuff, but I literally do not have the stuff to be able to test that. So I'm sorry about that, but just it wasn't going to be possible for me to do that at all because I need this PC for literally tomorrow. And yeah, and that's. Alexa, stop. But yeah, after half an hour, the temperatures 65C average, 70C max, minimum 59. It's, it's great. It's, I'm really impressed. Really, really impressed. So, there's not much else to say, really. It, it's great. So next, we also got to do the sound test for it, first at idle, for, then at max load, at idle, fans are at 350 RPM, and at max load, they're at 750. So, what's the moral of this story? Um, I think it's that liquid metal will last a long time in terms of being able to conduct heat. But, the longer you leave it, the harder it is to get off. Because I've seen, I've seen tests of after a year where it's still a liquid. Now, liquid metal is made out of gallium and indium. At least, um, conductor noise from thermal grizzly. So, why that becomes solid after a long period of time, I have no idea because it's two metals with a very, very low melting point. So, why they solidify, I don't know. That's just, that just is strange to me. So, that's something I have to do some research about to find out, but. Liquid metal lasts a long time as long as you're willing for the cleanup process, which is 
a lot of scraping, a lot of just. I, I, it w it would have been easier for me if I had isopropyl alcohol or some form of acid, but I didn't. So I used this method, which was a lot, actually a lot safer for you than using those um, chemicals. But isopropyl alcohol and a scraper and some steel wool is plenty to get it off. But you're just much better off replacing it yearly because you, then you can just wipe it off with isopropyl alcohol. So yeah, liquid metal, replace it yearly unless you want to be scraping. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed and um, I really hope you learned something because that's the point of this. Uh, I've never seen anyone do it, anyone do a test like this. That's the main reason why I did it. So I hope you learned something and um, I'll see you with whatever random video I make next.